Welcome to the BS Banking Show, Mr. Kamkodi. Good to have you here. Hi, Rabu. Yeah. Question is that you are one of the smallest private banks in the country. How do you hold up your own against your larger peers of the country? See, the, uh, the, the question of uh, large or small uh, doesn't actually play any uh, significant role here. Uh, what actually matters is that uh, whether you are adding value to your stakeholders, be it your customers, be it your shareholders, be it your depositors, be it your borrowers. As long as uh, any institution which is able to add value to its stakeholders and also generate a return which is uh, more than the uh, cost of capital, the sustainability will be there continuously. If you uh, uh, see, let's like say, if you take uh, even any larger, uh, uh, let's like say, developed countries or whatever, you take any geography for that matter, you have uh, banks which are extremely big, you have banks which are, uh, um, let's like say, smaller. As long as you continue to add value to your stakeholders and as long as you stay relevant to your stakeholders, your uh, uh, existence will not be questioned. And uh, yes, it is a challenging thing that like say every uh, year uh, you have to keep asking that question, how are you adding value to your own uh, uh, customers and all. But right from the beginning, I mean, just to uh, give a broader idea, uh, maybe up to the uh, late 80s and early 90s till the liberalization, we all uh, traditional private sector banks, we have wanted to remain small for the fear of being getting nationalized. So things changed after that, we had to completely change our DNA and all, but nevertheless, right from the beginning, uh, the, the bank has made profit uh, every year of its, uh, uh, like say, uh, uh, every year uh, from 1904 to current year, and also declared a dividend uh, every year, right from 1904 to uh, till date. So we, uh, more than the, uh, like say, just size, we look into the efficiency and the profitability ratios, be it return on assets or return on uh, equity, cost to income ratio and all. In all efficiency and the, uh, profitability parameters uh, 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 for many years, uh, our bank had been reasonably at the uh, top position, maybe the uh, top 10 percentage of the industry. And we uh, uh, focus on those metrics uh, which keeps us going. Yeah, I'll have a follow-up question to this. The, the, the conventional wisdom is that scale matters a lot. And here you are telling Scale is not everything. It is efficiency parameters that matters. So where does the trade-off happen in all of this? See, the uh, uh, fu fundamental thing is uh, you, you don't, uh, like say, if you look into basically the scale is nothing but you are measured by your cost to income ratio. Cost to income ratio, you have uh, uh, banks, bigger banks with the larger cost to income ratio and you have smaller banks with uh, lesser uh, uh, cost to income ratio. Finally, like uh, you don't have one-on-one -on -one correlation on these things. So uh, uh, as long as you you uh, you you uh, like say tightly hold your cast and you tightly uh, ensure that you are uh, efficient uh, onwards, all these things uh, like say are uh, obviously uh, taken care of. I don't say that uh, you don't have uh, like say there is no disadvantage because of the size and all. Yes, there are uh, disadvantages because of the size. Uh, and there are advantages of the size also. In fact, uh, uh, um, uh, like uh, about uh, 15 years back, um, uh, somewhere in the uh, early part of, uh, like say, 2000s, um, uh, in fact, we used to repeatedly hear that uh, we only we need larger banks, smaller banks won't survive and all. This was something which is uh, being which was uh, told uh, uh, many years back. And uh, uh, somewhere around 2009-10, after the uh, Lehman crisis and all, um, uh, in fact, uh, 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 the, the, the narration became slightly different, saying that uh, when, when you have bigger banks, the, uh, the problems uh, becomes bigger. And when you have smaller banks, the problems are smaller. So it is not exactly the size alone matters. The size also matters to some extent. But we try to ensure that, uh, like say, our uh, efficiency and the profitability matrices are uh, managed and uh, properly focused in such a way that uh, those uh, disadvantages are properly uh, covered up and uh, are counterbalanced. A substantial portion of your book, nearly 40%, when I last looked at the numbers, is in the, is in the MSME segment. How has this portfolio been holding up post pandemic? See, uh, if you had a chance to uh, look into our, uh, like say, last 10 years, just to give you a broader idea, uh, up to financial year, say, uh, 16, 
we had a slippage ratio of about uh, like say uh, uh, um, just under two percentage to the closing advances as our uh, slippage to uh, NPA. So after your 17, 18, 19, 17, 18, you had demonetization, then introduction of uh, GST. Uh, somewhere around uh, 2019 calendar year end, you started seeing some amount of, uh, uh, like say, uh, things, uh, uh, like say, the, um, uh, where uh, um, some sort of, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, things were not smoother towards the, uh, around December, uh, November, December 2019 and all, when we said uh, we are taking our legs off the uh, growth pedal and all. And immediately in two, three months, uh, uh, we had uh, COVID. So during the years of 17, uh, 18 and 19, our slippage ratio was about 2 to 2 and a half percentage. And during the COVID years of, uh, like say, 20, 21 and 22, our slippage ratio to uh, NPA increased between 3 to 3 and a half percentage. Now things are getting back to the pre-COVID level of 2 to 2 and a half percentage. Mm. So basically the thing is that, uh, like say, uh, um, many things in unorganized sector are getting into the organized sector. People are, uh, entrepreneurs are also finding their way to, like say, organize uh, uh, themselves and all. So uh, the, uh, in, in that way, yes, there are uh, uh, fundamental changes in the way businesses are, uh, uh, particularly the small and medium scale businesses are operating uh, in this country. But uh, uh, to greater extent, uh, uh, things have uh, come back to closer to the uh, pre-COVID level. In fact, uh, uh, that is also getting reflected uh, the, the data of uh, capacity utilization and all. Um, which typically used to be about uh, 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 around 75 to 80 percentage. Normally, the investment cycle starts when the capacity utilization crosses 85 percentage or so. During COVID period, it came down to maybe 60, 65 percentage. Now things are back to that uh, 75 to 80 percentage of uh, uh, pre-COVID level. Retail banking is a flavor among private banks. But given that millennials are switch to switch loyalties, how are you lapping into the set of clientele? One thing, um, basically, like uh, our major focus had been uh, towards uh, what do you call self-employed people right from the beginning. Like say, in a country of uh, 130, uh, 140 crore people, mm. you hardly have about uh, 5 to 6 lakh, I mean, 5 to 6 crore uh, um, uh, income tax payers. Uh, bulk of the numbers come from the salaried uh, uh, segment. So uh, the, the, the salaried segment in our country is like say, uh, too small. So our focus right from the beginning, when we defined, uh, like say, small and medium scale enterprises, commercial trading and agriculture as our uh, core base constitute about uh, 75, 80 percentage of our total loan book, our focus had been towards more towards self-employed and entrepreneurs uh, type. So our uh, focus on the uh, salaried segment, uh, the retail, what you call is uh, relatively less. Nevertheless, what we did was that uh, uh, over a period of time, for uh, we became bankers for uh, like say many uh, uh, well reputed educational institutions of uh, uh, our part of the uh, country. So we uh, get those uh, like say uh, engineering students and all who graduate, they become our customers as the student. We focused on the students as the segment. So when they uh, complete their education and they get into uh, like say their uh, uh, profession as an engineer with a software company or any company, so even if uh, uh, 50 percent, 25 to 50 percentage of them continue the relationship, it, it started giving us some amount of continuous uh, uh, scheme of uh, things. So that is the way we are uh, keeping our uh, things going because in future uh, the, the composition could uh, change. So the uh, this is the and another thing as I have been repeatedly saying, your things uh, like say stay if you are able to convince your customers that you are adding value to them. So we, through our uh, product offering and our, through our services, uh, we want to ensure that uh, we continuously add value to that uh, segment. And uh, uh, it could be a, a minority, but a significant minority to us over a period of time. But our core focus had been to self-employed entrepreneurs to a greater extent. Can you give us a sense of your bank, branch expansion strategy? Last year, you did a small expansion of 22, 25 branches. How do you see this panning out? See, we had a, a, a record of opening 50 branches every year up to, uh, like, say, financial year uh, uh, 20. Pre-COVID, uh, uh, for the, like, say, for the previous 10 years, we had about, uh, at an average of 50 branches per year. During uh, COVID period, we had to stop, and last year, we had 25 branches. So, going forward, this year, on, uh, uh, this year onwards, our planning is to have 50 to 75 branches uh, every year, is the planning we have. 
we will be shortly opening our 500th branch in the state of uh, tamil nadu um, and uh, out of our 727 branches uh, uh, 490 plus are in the state of tamil nadu the uh, five southern states of uh, telangana andhra pradesh karnataka uh, kerala uh, together they uh, constitute about uh, still about uh, 80 85 percentage of our total branch network we have opened a handful of branches every year in the states of say maharashtra gujarat rajasthan and all we typically take about 10 years to have our deepening presence after tamil nadu we have in andhra and telangana our presence is there in most of the districts now the deepening will start happening towards the uh, taluk and the mandal level and uh, we have uh, started opening a handful of branches every year in the um, rajasthan uh, maharashtra and uh, uh, gujarat so maybe in the next 5 6 years we will be uh, exhausting that districts and start getting into the next level so we take our time slowly and steadily we should be uh, touching uh, our uh, maybe say 1000 uh, 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 branches by uh, uh, 2025 26 is what we see uh, which appears to be a reasonable target at this point of time you are among the major deployers of recyclers as a proportion of your total branches can you tell me how the traffic in in branch traffic and out uh, outside traffic is going to play out going ahead see the uh, uh, what happened was about 4 uh, 5 um, uh, years back uh, uh, even uh, rbi gave uh, uh, some sort of subsidies to the bank to uh, uh, go for recyclers so that uh, the uh, automation uh, along with the uh, atm and all we used to that opportunities and we uh, like say uh, uh, went with a plan to have one, at least one recycler in every branch so our original target was to have like say uh, the ratio between the number of branches and uh, uh, number of atm should be 1 is to 2 so that we will have one on site and uh, uh, maybe one off site for every branch at an average level uh, it was our uh, plan so when we started that exercise we had at least uh, uh, not less than 50 to 60 percentage of the traffic was to branches in uh, 2014 we had a major uh, uh, software upgrade to uh, banks from uh, uh, tcs quads which we, we were running at that point of time along with that we introduced our uh, digital uh, app i mean uh, internet banking and mobile banking we took the internet banking mobile banking atm and uh, bne as a uh, uh, what the recycler we call it as bnes bulk note acceptors together as a strategy and we wanted to uh, like say migrate as much as possible those transactions done by the customers inside the branches which could be done through the non branch channel we wanted to uh, migrate that and uh, last i mean the covid also accelerated that from about 40 50 percentage uh, uh, like say uh, only in non branch channel currently we are running at about 97 98 percentage of our transactions have migrated to non branch channel which includes our digital channels like uh, mobile banking internet banking and also our atm network and uh, bna this has to greater extent reduced the uh, traffic inside the branch and lot of uh, free time is created which is w- one of the reasons why our cost income ratio is low and the surplus time which is created uh, is getting now used for better customer service deepening of the customers uh, offering other products and things like that and all which has helped us to uh, like say take things in a bigger uh, uh, more uh, efficient uh, fashion so the uh, it uh, currently uh, we have only uh, about th- less than 3 percentage 3 to 4 percentage of the customer transactions are happening from the inside the branch now Thank you, Mr. Kam Kodi, for being on our show. Look forward to having you again sometime later. My pleasure. Thank you, Raghu. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views, and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, and LinkedIn. I am the blue of the limitless sky. I am the inspiration that lets success soar high. I will achieve. Nation's trusted bank, SBI, the bank of to every Indian.